Hey guys, this is the story of the most illegal place on the internet. You can do a lot of weird stuff on the internet. I mean, Ken met his waifu there, right? But for all the really nefarious dealings, you need to head over to the dark web. You won't be able to access the dark web using a standard browser like Chrome. Instead, you need special software such as Tor, which stands for the Onion Router. The Tor browser is actually based on Firefox and is used to access a .onion domain as opposed to standard domains such as .com or .org. Onion routing is where data is encrypted in layers, and each layer is bounced through several random computers before reaching its destination. No single layer contains the entire IP address of the source, thus remaining almost entirely anonymous, kind of like a VPN on steroids. Matt, does your computer have layers? Ironically, Tor was originally developed not for Shrek, but for the military to send confidential information. Now today, the military still funds Tor, but it is entirely operated as a nonprofit by volunteers. Not everything on the dark web is illegal. A lot of users just want to take advantage of the anonymity. Even sites such as Facebook offer a dark web version, which amazingly enough, yes, Facebook does offer some privacy. Now, not only does this provide security, but importantly, it allows a lot of users to circumvent things like surveillance as well as censorship. Because of this, the dark web is a haven for sites specializing in nefarious activities, selling drugs, stolen credit cards, or even hiring a hitman. However, the most infamous site was the Silk Road. Founded in February 2011 by Ross Ulbricht, it was named after the real Silk Road, a trade route that connected Europe, India, and China way back in the day. When Ulbricht graduated college, he started up his first company, a much more wholesome business, good wagon books to sell, well, you know, used books. Now naturally, he moved from reselling textbooks to the only business that's even more lucrative, selling drugs. It seems like a natural transition, really. They get you hooked. Just one book. 100% of the Silk Road's transactions were done through Bitcoin to further maintain the user's anonymity. Fun fact, lots of people had a few Bitcoin left over after buying stuff on the Silk Road and accidentally made a ton of money when Bitcoin spiked. See kids, who said crime doesn't pay? I feel like we can't tell kids to do that. It's okay, just accidentally speculate on the price of Bitcoin while buying illegal substances years before it becomes popular seems totally reasonable to me. That's obviously a repeatable thing that anyone can do. By 2013, the site had over 10,000 products available. However, 70% of those products were drugs. You can even browse by category for things like stimulants, psychedelics, prescriptions, and of course, the nefarious other. Ulbricht was met with a number of issues in running the site. He was a self-taught coder, and skilled hackers were often able to break into the Silk Road security and use that to blackmail Ulbricht. Toward the end, he was paying tens of thousands of dollars a week to ward off blackmailers. Ulbricht reached out to the Hells Angels to put out a hit on some of these blackmailers, but apparently $300,000 was too expensive. Like, I want a guy dead, but I'm on a budget. Man, that's the weirdest thing I've ever said on this is. Nah, I've said some weird things. However, what actually brought down Silk Road was just good old fashioned sloppiness. Online, Ulbricht went by the name Dread Pirate Roberts, a reference to the Princess Bride, which I guess I've never seen, but according to Matt, is quite a good movie. <laughs> However, when the site launched, he originally went by Altoid instead of Dread Pirate Roberts. Now, Ulbricht had posted advertisements for Silk Road on a number of Bitcoin forums using his Altoid username. Once they had his name, police were easily able to track him down to the San Francisco Public Library. Fearing that he would attempt to delete or encrypt his laptop, two FBI agents distracted Ulbricht by posing as a couple getting into a heated argument. When he turned to see that argument, another agent grabbed the laptop before quickly arresting him. Ulbricht was charged with money laundering, computer hacking, and conspiracy to traffic narcotics, and was convicted and sentenced to a double life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. So, you know, maybe don't start a deep web drug empire while using your name at Gmail, I guess. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of This Is. You can find more episodes right here and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, Matt will have to go back to making his money on the dark web. That was, that was, that was disturbing, man. You just don't do that, please. Mm. <laughs>